What was that? Sunderland 3, Wolves 0 to end the season. I found that quite funny to be honest. Um, obviously very, very annoying that we'd had to go all that way and spend all that money on hotels and getting up early some people and all sorts. But And to be greeted with that performance was unprofessional from the Wolves players. Uh, they lacked the positivity and the ment you know, the mentality that they've had all season about just going out and doing the job and playing in the same way that they have done every game. That was missing today. Um, I think you can possibly look at some of the changes. I think obviously Bolly and Ruddy, their importance was highlighted today in the lack of organisation at the back. John Ruddy uh, came in for some, a lot of criticism earlier on in the season back in February when he made a couple of mistakes against Preston and against Norwich. And there were calls for Will Norris to come in and then he showed that his lack of experience, he was at fault for two of the three goals, uh, the first two in the first half, he could have done better, but I know, for such a young goalkeeper, and you think of the moments that he's had this season, particularly against Manchester City, I don't feel any sort of bad feelings towards him. I do think that he was unfortunate with the substitution of the goalkeepers, I think that was always planned. But it just looked bad <laughs> when when it happened. It was about 20 minutes to go. He just conceded the third goal and he saw Burgoyne warming up and he thought, oh, hang on a minute, come on now, no, no, don't be so harsh. But um, Burgoyne came on and did make one decent save then to stop it being 4 0, which would have been completely embarrassing. Uh, but that being said, Wolves are really poor today. Uh, they lacked a lot going forward. And di despite the front. Part of the pitch, you know, the mid the midfield was the midfield four or two, however you look at it, was exactly the same with Sais, Neves, Doherty, and Douglas. And then the front three only really had Gibbs White instead of a Fobi or Bonatini. Um, so really, we should have done better, I think, going forward. Uh, but we didn't create any chances at all. It was very, very disappointing in that respect. Now, some I've heard some people now talking uh, on the way home about a phobia and the fact that he wasn't brought on today means that surely that's the end of his Wolves career but I don't think that's the case I think that what would have happened is Bonatini is over the last four months or so has been the one with a big question mark over his head and a phobia has had the opportunity over the last six or seven games really or longer than that ten games probably to stake a claim and he has done I think he's done enough to suggest that he can contribute something towards this team, whereas Bonatini has gone right off the boil. So bringing him on for the last half an hour or so, it, as it was, was more beneficial or more useful for Nuno to see than bringing a phobia on. I think, from what I understand, uh, the Wolves will sign a phobia, uh, and Bonatini will probably go back to Al Hilal at the end of the season. It's a shame that we don't end on 100 points, but to be honest, it, Nobody's going to remember in five, ten years' time if we're still in the Premier League what we got in the Championship. It's a shame as well that we didn't beat every team in the division. It's a shame to give Sunderland such an easy win uh, on the last game of the season. But there was a, a complete difference in the mentalities between the two teams. You had Sunderland who were desperate to go out on a high after a terrible, terrible season. One of the worst teams the, the Championship has ever seen in terms of points tallies. And I was very surprised to see how behind the team the fans were. If you remember when we went down to uh, League One, there was a lot of vitriol aimed towards some of the players. Think about some of the players that they've got and the mess behind the scenes. It was quite pleasing to see and I th it must fill Sunderland fans with a bit of confidence that they're all together, they all understand and I think that's what Wolves had when we went down to League One was that we connected more with the, the players and the club and we could see ourselves in some of the players and they were trying to come back in a positive way. And I think if Sunderland can make the right choices now over the summer, appoint a good manager and things like that, they've got the potential to come straight back up. But we've seen so many other teams like Leeds and Sheffield United, and Sheffield Wednesday to an extent a few years ago, really struggle down in League One because it's a horrible division. <laughs> really horrible. But um, yeah, if they're only down there for a year, it's enjoyable. So... For the last time this season, thank you all very much. 
Uh, it's been a pleasure to make these videos for you. I can't believe how many views we've got this season. Um, and I can't wait to start again back in uh, August doing these match reviews. In the meantime, between now and the start of the season, I'll be doing what I did last summer, which I'm sure lots of you will remember. It's the little transfer rumours and stuff. Occasionally, as and when, there's not going to be any structure to it because there is, you know, the rumours come when they come. Uh, so make sure you do subscribe to the channel so you pick up on any of the transfer business or whatever because I'll read through all the papers and I'll find all the gossip columns or whatever and I'll collate them all here so you don't have to and then yeah we'll all have a great summer because we all know at the end of it we're going to be in the Premier League and I think we're going to have a very exciting summer as well there's going to be an awful lot of signs and I can't wait thank you all very much again for all the support this season and I'll see some of you tomorrow probably at the West Park event. If not, I'll see you in the summer.